Artificial intelligence AI is technology that enables computers and digital devices to learn, read, write, create, and analyze. Let's bring in Professor Christopher Lamont, Deputy Head Program for Artificial Intelligence and Global Governance from the Global Governance Institute based in Brussels, Belgium, but he is currently in Tokyo, Japan. Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank you so much for having me. It is a real pleasure to be here. Okay, let's start the Global Affairs Insider. How do you think AI can transform governments and justice practices around the world? This is a, a big question to, to ask. And AI it has um, multifaceted impacts across a number of different sectors of, of pu public policy. And it is within the justice sector that perhaps some of these impacts are both most visible, but also in a way um, most troubling, right? So if you think about um, the justice sector and you think about algorithmic logics, algorithmic logics are largely probabilistic. Meaning that, for example, if you've trained an AI to go through um, job applications and CVs that have been sent to your company, it will associate certain things from the data with good employees or somebody you'd want to hire. And there's certain things in the data that it would associate with um, things that you might want to be careful about in terms of your hiring practices. And so these are these are largely probabilistic based on this large body of data that the tool has been trained on. Now, when you think about the justice sector and you think about in particular criminal justice, um, introducing probabilities, probabilistic evidence is, is something that requires a certain degree of understanding of just what that is telling you, right? And so um, these things, when introduced in contexts where they're not very well understood, can be extremely prejudicial to a defendant. If so, for example, um, somebody hears, oh, there's a 98% <laughs> probability, they might assume, oh, well, this person must be the culprit. But in actuality, that's just kind of a probability based on data <laughs> that um, this tool has had access to and might not really tell you very much about this individual and their individual circumstances, right? So it, it could be as kind of mundane and ordinary as um, there might be an association with kind of somebody drinking coffee, <laughs> right, and and a particular action, but that doesn't mean every single person who drinks coffee will do that particular thing. So when it comes to the justice sector, there are more guardrails, if we can use that term, that need to be in place, and also a higher degree of understanding and sophistication, because if you think about um, things that your viewers might be familiar with, like the ability to generate, for example, videos and um, recreate real world spaces through artificial intelligence tools, you have the potential, and this has happened in, in some international trial processes, where you can have a digital recreation of a crime scene, but it's not the exact same, right? And so you might find that there's certain things that appear in the digital model, but they don't actually appear in the real thing. And when you introduce this to um, judges, this again can be something that can be very distorting or give people a very distorted picture of something that is at the heart of criminal justice processes, and that's determining the guilt or innocence of an accused person. How transformative is the impact of artificial intelligence to the practice of public governance nowadays? Yes, so much like um, with your previous question, kind of looking at the, the justice sector, 
it's transformative in part because it's there, right? Whether or not these tools are doing the things that they're marketed to do is, is kind of another question, but, but people do, will make use of them. And if you think about the kind of broader public administration, there are a number of things that are now possible for public administration that weren't easily doable in the past or might have cost a lot in terms of human resources. So if we take one um, not so pleasant aspect of public administration, but that kind of uh, surveillance, um, at one time, this was largely based on largely analog tools and techniques. Whereas now, um, a police force or law enforcement can have a real-time awareness of where people are moving around a city. And so the data, right, the, the information that, that we all are kind of producing and broadcasting voluntarily um, tells the state a lot more about us, but it also tells, tells private companies, right? It tells marketers, and sometimes the marketers want to know more, <laughs> are more intrusive than the state. We tend to have this image of um, state surveillance, but but in kind of practice, um, there are a whole lot of um, data brokers out there who would like to collect this information. So that's, that's one aspect of, of public administration. But on the other hand, um, you might think about things that, that, that are kind of human resource problems in big public administrations that make public administrations inefficient and not so pleasant to deal with, right? There aren't that many people who get excited about having to go visit their local government office to, to receive something, right? And so you have a move. A lot of countries have um, adopted e-governance or de -go um, digital governance platforms that allow citizens to easily access things that they need through a secure platform that will streamline a lot of interactions and governance processes. And also it allows um, administrations to, to make decisions more quickly on the basis of a lot of data that they didn't have access to. and. It could be it, 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 in, it, in many cases, right? We think about um, the kind of the, the dark side, right, of algorithmic decision making. So when it gets it wrong, but in a lot of cases, and that's why these tools are in a way in such wide use, they provide a basis for empirical decision making that allows for us to make or allows for um, public administration to make um, more evidence-based decisions, which is a good thing. You might think about um, really complex challenges that countries are facing today, um, global challenges like climate change, and you see um, AI tools being used to create, for example, better climate models, but also to um, be deployed in the context of looking for policy solutions to, to many of these complex problems that, that we are facing. So, um, well, when we're talking about the justice sector, right, we have a healthy dose of, dose of skepticism because of the due process implications. It's also important to understand and, and recognize the potential of these technologies for improving public administration and making dealing with public administration kind of more straightforward and perhaps easier, quicker, and faster on societies. Professor Christopher Lamont, Deputy Head of Program for Artificial Intelligence and Global Governance from the Global Governance Institute based in Brussels, Belgium. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure. This is Dr. Riron Del Rosario. That's the Global Affairs Insider. Follow us to our next episode only here in IPDCA News Channel.